there's a number of uh, 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 documentaries and videos on YouTube about that. But there's Bloody Friday, which has yeah. been forgotten about, yeah. and that was whenever the uh, there were t uh, 19 bombs set off in the centre of Belfast, uh, 21st of July, 1972. Miraculously, only 10 people lost their lives. There's a great uh, documentary, last one hour, on uh, YouTube called Bloody Friday. Read yeah. that. Also read The Shankill Butchers by a man called Martin Dillon. You can mm. get that on Amazon. And that's about a group of terrorists who used to drive around in a Ford car in the 1970s in a certain part of Belfast and pick people off the street late at night and butcher them to death. Oh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, when you think of how small Belfast is yes. as well. But that's a really interesting book. It's all factual. It reads like a gruesomely compelling th thriller. And you read it and you go, oh my goodness. So what was the population of Belfast back in the 70s? <coughs> It wasn't 650 like it is today. It was probably around half a million, 450, 500. It was still, still, it was still a big city. Yeah. At one point, Belfast was bigger than Dublin. Right. <coughs> and they say that's another reason when partition occurred, that the UK wanted to hold on to Belfast, Northern Ireland, because it was so important industrially. Right. See, of course. <laughs> Sam, do you still give tours? Yeah. You do? Okay. But you do both. You do the driving yeah. sometimes and sometimes the tours. I used to have a, a private car for I used to do like, private tours for like two or three people. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, nice. We sort of developed in the genealogy tours. From uh, people from America and stuff, yeah. you know, or um, that's popular. Uh, yeah. popular. Yeah, it just happened by accident, but yeah, yeah. Well, I qualified about five years ago, Richard. Yeah, yeah. Five years ago. Yeah. Although yeah. I've been doing this job almost 40 years, so he's been everywhere. <laughs> he used to drive all around Europe and do tours all around the place, oh, so he's wow. really seasoned. And he's only 23. Only 23, yeah. yeah. Oh, That's what the job see. does to you. <laughs> <laughs> it's been very stressful. <laughs> oh, these guys are coming up to the cars to pay. Yeah, we have a. Um, yeah, this is, you, you do know you've all got to pay an extra hundred and fifty dollars each. Don't you? No, we've got we've got a thing to pay them. <laughs> so what happens if you're in the middle of the line and can't pay? Oh, <laughs> you go overboard. Swim, yeah. Swim back. <laughs> over in the next round. <laughs> Oh, it's, it's getting warm. If he gets to the road, not to work, I'll just put it around. Do you want to open it? Or? I'm about to heat my room in case I come out and whack a little bit. Come on, knock him over. Knock him over. Go on, I'll do the window. Can you open the vent on the roof? Uh, well, no, it's an emergency accident only, really. Uh, uh, he's got to move in a minute. Once we get this guy with the orange coat, I don't know what will open the Just pay the ticket and get out of the road. Ferry service. Please listen carefully to the safety announcement. Emergency safety instructions are displayed in the passenger accommodation Follow Richard and, and on deck. Follow Richard Please and read them carefully. Excuse me, guys, how many on board all together? Uh, 17, 18, 18, 19. 19. So your um, your life belt should be under your seat, okay? If you don't have one, <laughs> sorry. What's the temperature of the water? Cool. Uh, really cold. <laughs> <laughs> I'm wet. We're all strong swimmers. Good. You need to be out here. Yeah, this is where the current is strongest. Which here, way? Oh. this place is called the Narrows. This is the narrowest part. And then it opens out into the Irish Sea just further along. You see the whirlpools? Is the tide going in or out? It's going out at the moment, I think. 
Well, then we're really in trouble. Yeah. We might end up in Scotland. Couldn't go up. Or the Isle of Man. <laughs> yeah. We're still scowling for these dolphins. So I think they must be going on. So, not. who owns the Isle of Man? Is that Mr. Man? Mr. Man. <laughs> 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 of course. <laughs> um, it's part of the United Kingdom, it but it's a tax haven. You know that? You don't pay tax on your earnings there, and if you live there, you can be a tax exile. It's like the Channel Islands, have you heard of them? Yes. So yeah. Jersey, Guernsey, and Sark, that are just off the coast of France, they are a tax haven as well. But they're part of some council, these nine or eleven different regions that the Guernsey and Jersey and, and the Isle of Man are part of some... Council. Oh, like an international, like Luxembourg? No, no, no it's it's just the UK or the Great Britain. I don't know, I've not heard of that. I've not heard of that, no. Well, that was up on our screen yeah, on the boat yeah, the other day. We were told okay. that, but... And real, I didn't, I didn't I really didn't, understand what I it was. I didn't understand it. Real estate must well, be expensive then. Because everybody's a member, all these, you know, Northern Ireland, Southern Ireland, I mean, the, the real Ireland. <laughs> and... Um, <laughs> Did you say real Did you just say that? It was just for fun. Okay. And then, um, my, my great grandfather came from County Mayo, okay? The worst possible place on the whole island. Right? So, anyway, they put this up here, only England is not a member of this council. What is that? Was that on your ship? Yeah. 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 Well, Viking are liars. <laughs> <laughs> this was a very distinguished guest speaker that we had, right? Well, With right. all the right information. Oh, they've got letters he, after their name that don't stop. Right. Oh, okay, okay. There's at least ten letters. After I don't know. What, I don't know that, and neither does Sam. And Sam's cleverer than me. <laughs> <laughs> so you're right. They were liars. Too. That's been up. Well, well, it just could be something. That, I mean, it's, it's it's rare that we haven't heard of something between us, but it, it, it's something that we may not have heard of. And so I jest when I say they're lying, but um, uh, well, it's something a council, very. It probably very doesn't do anything. I mean, the only thing I can say to you is that those areas are, are the, 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 the Channel Islands and the Isle of Man are tax havens. Oh. And that's about as much as I, I've been to them both. Um, I've been to Jersey a couple of times and also... Um, Set up your bank account. Yeah, I, know, I wish I had. <laughs> but, you know, you can't get, uh, you can't become a resident of Jersey. You can't just decide I'm going to become one. You have to go through a whole process. You have to have a certain amount of earnings. There was a TV series called Bergerac that ran in the 80s and 90s, and that was about a, um, a detective who was working on uh, Jersey, and it was an actor called John Nettles who started, this was one of those, you know, it was like a murder she wrote, it went on for years, and it was only um, under kind of duress that they let this wealthy actor uh, go and live, become a resident of Jersey. There you go. So it's difficult to get into. Yes. Yeah. And also they they accepted him because you know it was probably really looked really bad if they weren't going to accept the guy who was the lead in Bergerac, which had done so much to you know publicise their little their little country. Yeah. So um, the Channel Islands are beautiful. Um, the Isle of Man is just like Ireland. You know, it's really green and uh, lots of. Foliage, etc., etc. Right, we have ten past the road. Do what they'll do. And then up the road. Do you want to stop it? Gravity, either for a photo or just to drive no, down. Right, we'll miss it. And then we'll, we'll stop at Stormont for five minutes. Yeah, we'll yeah. see how we we'll play it by ear, okay? So we're almost at the end of this arduous sea crossing, okay? And you're about to land on the Ards Peninsula, A R D S Peninsula. This guy's switching. <laughs> Changing shift? Yeah. 
bullet wars with prams, the drive through prom wars. <laughs> it's a lot of drive through prom. <laughs> and there's the little tower house in front of us that dates from the early 1600s. It's right behind the uh, lifeboat station there that's shaped like a boat. Can you get into it? Yeah. Yeah, you can. Yeah, that's called Steps. Porta Ferry Castle, but it, it's obviously it's not a full castle. Sure. It's like the Tower House in uh, Strangford, except mm -hmm. this is about 20 years younger. The savages, the Normans. What were they used for signaling or something? They would have been used for observation, but they would also have been used uh, for protection. You could protect yourself quite easily <coughs> when you're in one of those. <coughs> So they would have been used as a residence, usually for the local nobility. Is most of the heat electric heat? Uh, no, we have gas. Uh -huh. We have gas, oil, kerosene, as you would call it. Mm -hmm. And it's, there's very few electric heat nowadays because it's really expensive. Yeah. Oh yeah, see the paddle she does? Those are sports people right there. That's the that's a hurling stick there, isn't that? She's got her, is that a hockey stick? That's a hurley stick. Yeah. That's a hurley stick there, we were talking about hurleys. Yeah. And how you can beat each other with them. That's part of the game. That's what she's brandishing.